Hello, everyone. Welcome to Next Big Future. I have my friend Randy Kirk here. We're going to have a series of videos. First one, we'll discuss that robotaxi is seen to be on the verge of developing and realizing um, next year by Tesla. And I argue that this is at least a five to 10 year lead and that the only rational move uh, will likely be for other uh, car companies to uh, join with um, Tesla via licensing. Then we'll discuss the impact on Tesla's share price and the timing of what will happen there. And then we'll, in the third part, we'll discuss how this is just not an ordinary um, stock event and, and other things that it, it does change the world. And it does radically impact uh, not just car company, but, but everything as well, because it's such a, um, a shift. So let me uh, present um, the, what I have on why it's a five, 10 year lead first, and then we'll discuss it. Okay. So um, we've had the CyberCab reveal um, we've had um, Tesla AI, Ashok um, Haraswamy, uh, saying that the version 13, which is releasing this weekend to internal people, um, internal Tesla employees, uh, and then wide to all Tesla owners who purchase the FSD uh, pretty much next month, um, that this will be a feature complete unsupervised version that was five to six times safer than um, other recent versions of FSD. Now, I'm so, now, my suspicion would be, this is just a guess, Brian, but my guess mm -hmm. would be that it doesn't necessarily mean that version 13.1 or whatever it is, the version right. that we get, which I think might be 13.3 based on some other mm -hmm. uh, things I've seen, that, that if 13.3 if is the release uh, approximately at Thanksgiving, um, that that doesn't necessarily mean that one will be unsupervised, but rather right. sometime in the 13 series will right. be the unsupervised version. Okay. Right. Um, but they did operate um, version 13 at the Robotactic Day with 50 vehicles, some cyber cabs, 20 cyber cabs, and 30 uh, Model 3, Model Y. So it did operate for thousands of rods there without uh, supervision. And it's also on the road. We don't know how many that are doing ride hailing with supervised, but presumably if it works, the, the supervisor just there for uh, safety for some reason, right? So it's already doing something very approximate to uh, Waymo at scales, not dissimilar from what Waymo is doing. Right. Okay. So this is from Frida Dwan showing how things have scaled up. So you'll notice at the very beginning, January, 2024, 12.1 comes out, one of the earliest versions of the full end-to-end -end neural network where they took out 300,000 lines of coding from the version 11 version of it. And um, by internal uh, disengagement metrics from Tesla, this increased by 100 times. Uh, the big jump was from 12.3 to 12.4, 10 times, and then three times from 12.4 to 12.5. We're basically at 12.56 now across most of the vehicles, the 400,000 to 500,000 vehicles in the United States that have it. And then the expectation is this five to six times improvement when version 13 comes out next month. And then there's were statements that this would increase 1,000 times over 2025. And Frida has put in another 5 to 6x to some version 14. That would then surpass human driving. The human driving range is not one number. There's um, people who have three times the normal average disengagement. Those are would be called teenage drivers and um, perhaps some, you know, bad senior drivers. You know, Never mind. No, no, that wouldn't be true. Yeah. The, the worst uh, drivers in general that you you come across, you know, like on a bell curve, the one at the low end, you know, are three times worse. So if you're within three times of, of that, then you're basically at the level of a teenage driver. So that's why these five, six times leaps mean you're leaping over from bad to, hey, pretty good, right? So that human experience is, is uh, not that wide. Um, so this is a rate of improvement. So another key fact is that when Frida Dewan and others, and there were some Chinese academics who tested the Chinese systems, compared them to the Tesla systems, and they compared Waymo crews to Tesla, they often say that everyone else is at version 11, which is before, you know, the end of 2023, before this chart started, right? Because version 12 was an improvement over the hand coding of a lot of systems. And you can imagine that because most, all the other companies did not go to high volumes of data, did not go to a full... AI neural net approach. They have AI, but not for the whole thing. So they had a lot of hand coding. So Tesla's mix of hand coding and some automation was approximate to these other systems that used uh, a lot more sensor and the hyper mapping. So map an entire area, like, because they only have uh, small parts of San Francisco and Phoenix, Arizona, and parts of LA for Waymo that they hyper map. And so their system is brittle. It works. It uses the crutch of uh, sensors <clears throat> in order to film. Uh, years to switch. So you have to choose to remove all your sensors, except the cameras, 
Uh, Tesla took some months to remove a small number of like uh, ultrasonic and other sensors uh, to not use those. And that took some time. So if you go from a different approach with sensors to without, that is a switch. And the training you did before with sensors does not apply to the new system um, with sensors. And then you have no training. Um, Tesla had hardware three and hardware four. You know, half, half perhaps have cars at hardware three, got hardware four, which was introduced later. The main point here is that Tesla has already said that um, it's very difficult to get hardware three to work, you know, beyond, you know, 12.4. That you, it, um, it's more and more difficult to get that. So maybe they have to take some time to get it working hardware four first and then go back and find a bunch of optimizations to squeeze in the system um, to get to a hardware three capable approach. So this pretty much means that anyone who's copying this needs to have hardware four or better hardware in all the cars. And, and, and to the extent that they're not even at hardware three, at this level, I mean, I don't think anybody would argue that their chip is as good as the current FSD chip. And pretty much 99% of the car companies out there and robotaxi companies are using NVIDIA chip. Right. They do not make their own custom. There right. is a, some one-off cases where they tr someone's trying to use um, some startup's chip. But it's a company that was is generally far smaller than NVIDIA, false far smaller who are using a chip. So um, it is so far probably unlikely that um, the NVIDIA chips alone would be sufficient to, to do this. Um, the using of power. So the, it is a non-trivial lift to get the right chip into. And then the other thing is that you're, these companies are buying from NVIDIA or buying from Tesla. If they chose to license from Tesla and Tesla has a solution, Tesla has a hardware 4 or hardware 5 chip, a 4 AI 5 chip, and they rena renamed it, that if Tesla has it all working, say next year, right? End-to-end, -end, full features, supervised. NVIDIA does not offer a complete solution. They offer the chip, they offer the hardware, you know, and this nice little uh, diagram, block diagram, of everything they offer, but it does not have all the data. It does not have a train system, right? It just think here, you have, you know, a um, Intel um, 8600, whatever chip, go to town, yeah. you know, go, yeah. go make it on your own, make this wonderful thing, right? We're still on you, the company to do this. Uh, and then we have that. So the journey is 2023. Yeah, Tesla had all the chips into Many of the cars. Sure. They spent years developing up to version 11. They still had to convert to end to end. They converted in 2023 and then implemented four. They had to unify their city driving and highway driving. And again, most of the um, Chinese companies are only doing often, um, often one, they're choosing one side or another. They're starting with city driving for like Waymo and then didn't go to the highway for long. So th there's, that is a non trivial gap to get both city and highway working and then to unify your city and highway. Again, different problem. And then uh, Tesla got 2 billion miles of driving from January uh, driving. So you need to have a lot of cars. We'll discuss that a bit. They had, t Tesla also had testing systems. They automated their label because they have to like label what's going on in the visual field. They got that completely on to not have human in the loop labeling. Also to pick out scenes from the video they record. And they're sending gigabytes of recorded video of driving back to the center. Again, if other companies are not doing that, they have to do that as a first step before they can start. If you're not recording it, you're not like actually paying attention. You cannot learn what it is happening. So you could drive all these miles, but you're not sending all the data back right. and highlighting the one in 10,000 case where it actually matters. Because most of the time, nothing's really, you're just doing regular driving. But when an incident occurs, that's one in 10,000 times. So you have to get one, a lot of miles so you can get like 10,000 incidences out of a billion miles of driving, but then you have to record them all. Otherwise it happened like a tree falling in the forest and you, you didn't, you didn't know, right? And then you have to have proper scoring of human drivers because um, Tesla introduced a driving score, which said, okay, you follow too close. You do these things too badly. You don't have, you're not a good driver based on our metric. Why is this relevant? The AI system started not just copying, should I turn here? Should I do this? You know, and then based on that, they looked at, we scored to determine these are the best drivers. These are the 99% best people, the top 1% or top point one, And then they hyper-focus on to model and copy their driving behavior. So that's all, and there's, you know, more things, but those are some of the big things that another company had to do. And this goes to that 2 billion, you know, um, that really just took off, you know, from March, 2023. And then, you know, version 12 FSD miles, they got, so it's a lot of drive. Most other companies like Waymo are doing like 150,000, 300,000 miles per week. So then you do 50 times that, and then you're at, uh, you know, maybe 50 million, right? So if you don't have that many cars, you're not getting that many miles, you cannot do the training in the, Tesla had 500,000 cars with hardware four or hardware three equivalent on the roads with FSD. So, so basically that is a huge lift. And so I say that that's a five to 10 year, you know, to get to, you know, a year or two for most, at, at least to get to that point where they can start. And it costs, if you're building all those cars and people aren't buying, or, or if you're, you're selling them, that that, involve $10 billion, $10 billion of hardware or something like that to get onto the road.
right? right. So it's like a huge cost to do a production thing. So you have to the factory to do it, you're partnering with someone and there's a huge risk. So I would say that if you know you're gonna have a five to 10 year uh, uh, delay in getting to, to winning, then themes the, the less risk approach is just buy it from Tesla, just license from Tesla. I don't have to spend five billion years. I don't have a five year project, 10 year project where I don't know if I can do it. And you know that the Tesla will win and then you can focus on other things. So what do you have reaction? Yeah, so I think that I've been learning a lot this week. Uh, CERN Basher made his trip up to Calgary and back. And I think there was some great learning in that. Um, and people can go back and take a look at that video over on my channel. Um, we we have, it. It it is amazing how many edge cases there are. Mm -hmm. So I did a video, I think it was about a month ago, where I said, why wouldn't Tesla at least do, put out the RoboTaxi now? Put it out now and have limitations. So the limitations could include it can't go. So it wouldn't necessarily say you can only go here, but it could be like uh, when you're driving a car uh, in on Maui and you get a rental car and it says you can't go <laughs> on this road. <laughs> if you go on that road, you're not covered by the insurance. And we, you, if you break the car, you're not covered there either. So, so you can have places where you can't go or situations where you can't go. Yesterday, there was some, some uh, video uh, or some... Uh, 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 positions taken on X where they were talking about how Waymo routes itself around difficult situations. So if there's a, a hard left turn, you know, the, the Chuck Cook left turn, well, you don't make that left turn. You find a way to get to your destination without having to make that hard left turn. Well, you could eliminate lots and lots of hard situations if you wanted to, just to make sure it doesn't get into difficulty. You could eliminate certain highways, higher highways, because you're not ready for going 65 miles an hour. So the, these are all, and there's many, many more ways that you could limit the system and still have an effective robo taxi system. It wouldn't be very good for a consumer who's driving their own vehicle and wanting to be chauffeured in their own car because you wouldn't want it to always be making these you know decisions not to go place. But for a robo taxi, it might work. Um, so back to the CERN example, CERN says, okay, I'm going you know seven thousand miles in ten days from Florida to Calgary. I'm taking very careful notes on the entire trip. And he's going along a two-lane road, a fat, very fast road, you know, 65, 70 miles an hour, whatever. But it's one one lane in each direction. The old country road type situation. <laughs> you don't see many of them anymore, but they're still out there. And he went, the truck, the car went to pass the truck. But the car thought it was two lanes in the same direction. And there was another car in that other lane coming right at him. <laughs> and he had to, you know, uh, make a decision to get right back in behind that truck. And then he says, later on, it made the same decision again. This time the car was way far down the road, but it still seemed to believe it was okay. And just kind of paralleled the truck this time. And he waited as long as he could, but then he accelerated and, and passed the truck uh, and, and, dis and did a disengagement. So that's a not such an odd circumstance, but it is something which you need millions and millions, apparently billions of miles before you catch all these even kind of normal cases. And so that would speak to your case exactly that in order to be able to actually be a functioning chauffeur or robotaxi, it's going to have to dra drive those 6 billion miles that Elon's talking about. Right. And the other thing about the, the billion of miles is that when, um, assuming that, um, there are maybe 12% adoption rate for FSD within the United States, right? By um, um, Q1 of next year, they could have, they claim that they'll have the European and China right. approvals, which could triple the, the market for that. If the adoption rate from a really, really good FSD, you know, better than human, what they're talking about, happened, then that would mean probably six times. And so as a number of vehicles increase, you could have by the, uh, you could Instead of 2 billion miles, by the uh, middle of next year, you could have another 10 billion. Mm. And then by, uh, if you're going at 5 billion miles per month, you could have a 40 billion, which even goes to the lead. As you accelerate and can do things without limit, then the number of miles, as you've also merged highway and city driving, right. it could really accelerate. So we're going to discuss the timing of that and what that means for the share price and what that means if the other car companies agree with my belief that they need to license from Tesla. So we'll join that in our next video. So join us there. Thank you.